Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the full moon in Virgo at 5 degrees 23 minutes on February 24th, 2024. Welcome. This full moon is a burst, a release of inspiration and creativity. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us connect with our multidimensional self. Here, you'll receive three energetic themes that I pulled out from the Virgo full moon chart. And also, at the end of the video, I have a couple of questions for you. Should you want to integrate this Virgo full moon energy some more? Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link for you to download it in the description box below. The new moon in Virgo was on September 14th, 2023. So there is something here that you have been working on. Maybe it's an idea, a creative project. And now at this full moon, it will be highlighted. The ruler of this full moon is Mercury. And Mercury is all about learning uh, that creative side of us. So yes, this is a uh, powerful spark, a po powerful release of something that you have been um, working on or learning from since September. At that new moon in September, we had Saturn in trying to formal out. And now here we are with an opposition of the full moon to formal hout and the sun conjunct formal hout. So there's a portal opening for a transformation, um, a rebirth. And we'll get into that more with the three energetic themes that I've put out for this uh, video from the full moon chart. This full moon is talking about that it's so easy to stay in our mind and limit ourselves to um, staying cautious and uh, cutting corners on our desires and ideas and what really inspires us. And this full moon is a call for fully stepping out in our authenticity uh, and what inspires us to become that full version of ourselves. We are here to discover that full path, that full purpose and mission that we individually have beyond what perceived limitations are telling us or what we're telling ourselves or what other people and situations are telling us or giving the idea that we can't do it or it has to be you know half baked or some corners cut no this full moon is calling us to fully step into our authenticity and discover that path that is beyond our perceived limitations so many of us are curious about what else is there for me to expand into and this is also um, recognition of all the lifetimes that we have worked on ourselves as a soul, worked on uh, going through the lessons and learning, balancing uh, our energy for this moment to fully step into our authenticity at this time. Because now we are ripe <laughs> to play a central role, a big role in our own life in the future, but also playing a big role in the future for the collective. So here we are at this Virgo full moon, uh, centering around that recognition of the healing that we have done as a collective, a healing that we have done as individuals. And most importantly, the connection to the path where we fit in, in, in the web of universal energy and in our full authenticity, be able to express that and feel that we belong. 
So there is this energy here of a rebirth, a death of something in your life and a new beginning of something else in your life. And that transition time that this uh, highlighting, this full moon is highlighting for us and the moment that we may need to take to recognize that uh, transition and everything that it took for us to get to this point. Mercury as the ruler of this full moon is conjunct the sun. And this is also highlighting this learning journey, the inspiration that gets highlighted by the sun uh, in order to uh, live our full purpose, that shining light on what we bring to the table, which is inspired by what inspires us, what makes me tick. And the form, conjunction here to Fomalhaut is so important because we are divinely guided. Our multidimensional self is all the components of us. Some of them we're in connection with in this life and some aspects of ourselves we're not. And as we expand now into experiencing parts of ourselves that are Coming online, <laughs> it's often where we discover talents and gifts and uh, creative endeavors that reminds us. It's a soul memory often that comes back and um, highlights and ignites at this time. So notice uh, any little inspiration that you may have at this time, because it's a sign for you to kind of, okay, what does this mean? We are now tapping into that inspiration and creativity that allows us to walk the next path into the future and playing a central role in our own life and others' life uh, moving forward. And before we go into the energetic themes, I'd like to share what the themes are. The first theme I've named learning to trust your inspiration. And we have a grand cross here in the first deacon, the first couple of degrees of respective signs and involving the full moon. And I'll talk more about it in the first theme. The second theme I've named expanding spiritual practice. And it involves the Lyra constellation, Ixion and Quawar and Ceres, who are also in a beautiful harmony. And you'll learn more about this in the second theme. The third theme I've named inner union for courageous leadership. And this is involving Venus's uh, square to Jupiter, but also Venus Mars conjunction that just happened a few days before this full moon. So let's take a look at the full moon chart. So here we have the full moon chart with the moon there at five degrees, 23 minutes in Virgo, almost by itself opposite the sun at 523 in Pisces. And if you notice there, the sun is uh, surrounded by the ruler of this full moon, Mercury at two degrees, 11 minutes. And also Saturn is in the vicinity here of the sun at nine degrees, 15 minutes. This is a chart that is highlighting the moon specifically because of the moon's uh, solo <laughs> traveling there uh, opposite almost everything else in the chart. So this also tells us that this full moon is highly influential. So here we have the first theme that I've named learning to trust your inspiration. And this theme is involving the full moon, as you can see there with the sun and moon opposite each other, but also Mercury and Saturn conjunct the sun. We also have uh, Pallas Athene, the asteroid Pallas Athene involved here at four degrees, 38 minutes. Um, and she is opposite the hiatus star cluster at six degrees of Gemini. One thing that I want to mention before we go into the meaning of this grand cross is that at the Gemini full moon that took place on November 27th, 2023, 
that full moon ruled by also by Mercury was conjunct the hiatus star cluster at six degrees of Gemini, squaring Fomalhaut at the time. Now, this full moon in Virgo, also ruled by Mercury, is opposite Fomalhaut, squaring the hiatus star cluster. So there's something in here that is a repeat highlight of Fomalhaut and the hiatus star cluster in the illumination of um, the creativity and inspiration that we are invited to really, really connect with at this time. So let's talk a little bit more about this grand cross and the energy signature of it. This is a um, expansive uh, growth opportunity uh, in the first deacon of respective sign. And what that means is that it's real. It's in the physical world. It's something that we likely will feel and notice. This full moon is speaking about that it's so easy for us to judge our own ideas, judge uh, because the moon in Virgo can be highly self-critical. Now, with the sun uh, surrounded by the ruler Mercury and Saturn here is this invitation to learn about what actually uh, ignites us some more. What are some of the extra layers that we need to dive into to illuminate this part of ourselves? In Pisces, it is about our dreams. The Sun, Mercury, and Saturn here in Pisces, in the early degrees of Pisces, are inviting us to those pure dreams that we have. What are they? Can we illuminate some additional layers and additional detail to that so that we can actually share it, communicate it? And Saturn is here to help us, okay, you know, it's really time to dive into those dreams that we may have put on the shelf even, because now is that time where we have the opportunity to step into and uh, be led by our inspiration. Now, Pallas Athene's role in this Grand Cross is essential. Pallas Athene is at four degrees and 38 minutes in Sagittarius. Pallas Athene is an archetypal energy of uh, wisdom, uh, very much uh, the feminine spiritual warrior, <laughs> uh, but also very, um, uh, sovereign in the sense that she knows what she wants and she goes after it, but not in a forceful way, in a more feminine way, with negotiation, with uh, questions, with uh, more the softer parts of the exploration that we're invited to do. And opposite the hiatus star cluster there at six degrees of Gemini, that is the creativity, the burst of creativity that we are invited to tap into. The hiatus star cluster is an essential hub for reincarnation. Uh, I have seen in many readings that sometimes there is an incarnation in the hiatus star cluster before descending to a life on earth. And it's this infusion of a life force and creativity and all the potential that uh, we have in a earth life to realize our potential in the physical form. So here, this is an energy to allow us to um, learn from that discovery of creativity within ourselves to uh, link into uh, our dreams uh, beyond our perceived limitations. The moon is here to highlight that tendency we have to box ourselves in and not feeling that we uh, want to take that leap out in the unknown, right? The involvement of the Royal Star Fomalhaut in this Grand Cross is bringing that high frequency Blu-ray associated higher intelligence type of creativity that is igniting this 
grand cross with this full moon in center, of course, but uh, infused also by Pallas Athene's very um, direct but very feminine leadership and that burst of creativity coming from the hiatus star cluster. This full moon is inviting us to step into this transition and leaving something from the past behind and making space for the new beginning. So here we have formal health located at four degrees, 13 minutes of Pisces and connect with that blue ray energy coming through the fixed star there. And on the sky map, you can see it's located south of uh, the constellation Pegasus. And the dust cloud around it there is beautiful. Now, if you have alignments to formal health, especially conjunctions or oppositions, it indicates a deep talent of creativity, whether it's writing, uh, singing, sound, science, any type of exploration that has to do with unlimited creativity. It also indicates that you may have had royal lives. Uh, royal stars are often in the markers in the chart for um, elevated positions in past lives in some shape or form. Uh, Archangel Gabriel is also angelic support associated with formal health specifically. Formal health alignments also indicate increased ability uh, to connect with through your intuition and the dream world. So here we have the second theme that I've named expanding spiritual practice. And if you've followed me for a while, you know that I tend to find these kite formations in the chart. And here's another one. So this kite is speaking about going beyond what we know. And I'll walk you through what I see here. Before we do that, though, first of all, I want to highlight Alan Clay's new book, New Stars for a New Era, which is an excellent book describing the Kuiper Belt objects that are now coming into our awareness. And uh, of course, this is a book that can be used for reference. I loved the way he describes the, the dwarf planets and its potential role in interpretation of archetypal energy that we're now incoming with new earth energy. Because I got so inspired by uh, the opportunity to bring in Kuiper Belt objects in the galactic astrology reading for this full moon. And for those of you who are not familiar with what the Kuiper Belt is, uh, this image is showing you, uh, of course, our uh, position here with Earth, uh, as opposed to the Sun and our solar system, the asteroid belt. And the Kuiper Belt are uh, part of what we call the trans-Neptunian objects, which are beyond Neptune. And Pluto, you could argue, is part of the Kuiper Belt in some way, but that's the perspective that we're using here. And often it has been said that Kuiper Belt objects or asteroids and, and new objects in the sky uh, are discovered once we are uh, open and ready to uh, start working with its energy. So. Going back to this kite, I want to start first with focusing in on the dwarf planet Quawar, who is conjunct the fixed star Lyra Alat far at 10 degrees of Capricorn. Lyra Alat far at 10 degrees of Capricorn is associated with energy of mastery of sound, of light language, of music. And if we look at Alan Clay's description of Quawar now in more depth, it includes this spirit consciousness that uh, is suggesting and inviting us to use uh, spiritual practice, an expanded spiritual practice involving song, dance, uh, creativity. And so this is an powerful combination infusing this energy to this kite at this full moon. 
it speaks of enriching our lives with spirit. And also Quawar is considered the higher octave of Jupiter. So there's an expansion energy part of it. And this trine to Jupiter at 10 degrees of Taurus now is inviting us to really bring it to earth, right? This could involve spiritual practice being expanded through new rituals, new ways of uh, defining spiritual practice. It's in the earth signs here and also at the cusp to the de uh, second deacon, but yet it is how we are using our body to um, sense this spirit consciousness, this uh, uh, language of vibration and sound. I also pulled in Ixion here at five degrees of Capricorn, conjunct the dwarf planet Ceres also at five degrees of Capricorn. And the reason is that the full moon is in itself at five degrees. So I got curious there uh, to learn about Ixion as well. And Ixion, as described by Alan, is associated with this seeker consciousness, our inner quest for coming into our authentic self and living from our passions. Cirrus is also the harvest, the nurturer of self and others. And allowing this combination of energy is an invitation for us to really expand into our passions, our creativity, using our spiritual practice and expand from there. So this is a taste of this new earth energy influencing us. And this kite is very powerful. It highlights the need for having a spiritual practice that expands us, that links us in and connects us with our passions so that we can live authentically from that space. A spiritual practice can nurture ourselves from within from a spiritual perspective and allowing that multidimensional self to come alive and for the body to be part of that journey as well. So here we have the some of the Kuiper Belt objects and I just wanted to show you, uh, you may recognize some of them. I usually have put in Haumea and Sedna so far with stars there on this image, but this time I'm also putting in Ixion and Quawar. And so here we have the third theme that I've named inner union for courageous leadership. And in this theme, the recent conjunction between Venus and Mars is highlighted here um, in Aquarius that happened just a few days before this full moon. Along with Pluto now being at one degree of Aquarius, this is our uh, transformational uh, portal, our invitation to walk into our future in a balanced way, our masculine feminine energies within. Uh, and here in at this full moon, we have a square to Jupiter at 10 degrees of Taurus. And as any square, it is that growth opportunity that can feel a little, you know, ah, resistant to it, but I know it's good for me. So anyone that is on the journey of balancing masculine and feminine within ourselves, it's right on time. That square with Jupiter is the expansion that we have been looking for. Uh, it's going to be felt at this full moon, but it's, it's for a purpose because here we go into the Aquarian age energy in, in a balanced way. This square to Jupiter uh, from the trio in Aquarius at this time is not only personal, but it's also a lasting growth opportunity. Jupiter in Taurus is there for a reason, to make it permanent, to uh, ground it in the earth. Now, this theme is not stopping there because there is, Antares is part of the stargate between uh, Antares and Aldebaran at 10 degrees of Gemini and Sagittarius 
respectively. This is the archetypal energy of time travel, multidimensional intergalactic travel that is involved here. And the connection to Antares at this full moon is speaking to that wider perspective that we are invited to have as we walk into the inner union of masculine and feminine energies within ourselves to raise that consciousness within ourself and if we combined this with parts of the kite before you remember the quawar trine jupiter and now this venus and mars trine to antares and we have a square between venus at nine degrees 43 minutes and jupiter and also a square between saturn and antares this is an expansion of the divine feminine uh, leadership, the based in spiritual practice that brings out the passion, the creativity within ourselves, the higher perspective, the multidimensional perspective that we have access to through this stargate uh, is also essential. The the expansion of our perspective of who we truly are. Saturn's square to Antares is uh, allowing us to really consider, am I expanding myself? My, am I expanding my perspective enough to be able to step into my authentic self? So I want to highlight here Aldebaran, as a royal star, along with the hiatus star cluster, which is a formation of three fixed stars at six degrees and eight degrees of Gemini. Aldebaran is at 10 degrees of Gemini. And you can see here where they are on the star map uh, located, uh, not too far from Orion constellation and the Pleiades cluster. The growth opportunity here, as highlighted by the squares, the Saturn Antares square, and also Venus and Jupiter square. It's asking us to reassess, are we taking the full opportunity of our creativity? Are we cutting corners? Or are we fully allowing our uh, full spectrum of creativity and ideas to come forth? so that we can step into our authentic self wholly and fully. So here we have it, that first theme uh, highlighting the grand cross in motion here, allowing us to trust our inspiration rather than um, leaning on the full moon in Virgo that wants to limit ourselves and put some judgments up there uh, of not moving forward or whatever it may be. Here we have divine feminine uh, creative wisdom at play. So yeah, how can you put this grand cross in motion for yourself within your life, utilizing this infusion from the hiatus star cluster of creativity? The second theme is about expanding and highlighting your own spiritual practice and to really make it work for you. A spiritual practice that you are invited to fully, wholly embrace as an expression of yourself. The inclusion of vibration, whether it's in the form of music, in the form of sound, or any other a creative expression of that spirit and seeker consciousness within us that is getting activated so strongly with this kite formation at this full moon. And then we have the third theme of inner union for courageous leadership. This is the merge of masculine and feminine energies within us. And with Pluto also in Aquarius now, it is an invitation for permanent transformation, allowing us to balance whatever is not balanced within ourselves, whether it's on the masculine energy side or on the feminine energy side. This is part of our new blueprint for new earth to walk in leadership, in courageous leadership, uh, balanced. 
So I have a couple of questions for you. Should you want to integrate this Virgo full moon energy some more? The first question is, how do you judge yourself? It's so easy to shut ourselves down very quickly. And that full moon in Virgo is reminding us to ask ourselves, how do we shut ourselves down and our ideas and dreams? How can you listen to your inspiration to source your confidence and conviction? The second question is, what is your spiritual practice? And if you have one already, how can you expand beyond that definition of your spiritual practice that you've put in place and go beyond that? How can you use sound, dance, music, song to expand your spiritual practice and your experience of it? And also, how can you refine your spiritual practice to something that really truly is unique to you and what works for you. It's so easy to um, do what other people are doing, <laughs> but here we're talking about your authentic spiritual practice that is supporting you and your spirit. The third question is how balanced are your masculine and feminine energies within yourself? Are you someone that is keeping yourself in motion all the time and not prioritizing your receptive side of rest and rejuvenation? Or are you someone that needs to get out of the house more and you know it? This, the square to Jupiter here is here to expand the one that's low, whether it's more activity you need in your life or whether it's more receptivity in your life. And that's just a simple example for what this could could mean. All in all, this union, this balance within yourself is going to help you step into that new blueprint for new earth of courageous leadership. So this was the Galactic Astrology reading for the full moon in Virgo. Uh, thank you for being here, listening and watching New Light Living podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide and there's a link below in the description box. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and listening New Light Living podcast. I love doing these readings for you. Thank you for being here and I will be back soon with another one. Bye.